Welcome to the Outer Realm with Michelle DeRoche and Amelia Passano. Airing live on the United Public Radio Network, 105.3 FM in New Orleans. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Thursday night segment of The Outer Realm. We are broadcasting live here on the United Public Radio Network, 105.3 FM from the beautiful city of New Orleans. We are fully sponsored by the amazing people over at Folgers Coffee who are with us each and every week. Thank you. Thank you, Folgers. Thank you, Dr. Snick, the sonic surgeon, a.k.a. Justin Snicker, who is an award-winning composer of Halloween horror, sci-fi, and dark wave electronic music, and is responsible for our fabulous intro and outro. Tonight, we welcome for the first time Meredith Herrenbrock, and she's going to be discussing family soul constellations, Huna healing, uh, and if all that, you know, we'll make our way through that, maybe a little bit of talk on some paranormal attachments and such um so we'll have to just wait and see how that all goes so hopefully hopefully we'll be able to get everything in because it sounds very exciting I read, read that woman's bio it's just like wow i know <laughs> it's awesome i know so mm -hmm. oh hey zach man adriana melissa hello 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 yeah <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's some enthusiasm right there. <laughs> I oh, was I trying smiled. to get the guy from the Muppets, but it just didn't come out that way. <laughs> what with the hello? One of those story. flipping days. It's been a day. It's been a day. It's been a day. <laughs> oh, no, really? It doesn't so sound bad. too freaking promising. I don't know. Oh, boy, I just oh, love boy. hooking up electronics. I really do. I like I like doing electronic. I'm, you know what's really sad is I'm really stuff. good at it. So when something doesn't work, I know the manufacturer screwed me. Right. So yeah, mm. I had one of those days. But anyways, oh that's not the fun. big screen is on my table, ready so that I don't have to wear glasses in the future. But the webcam just doesn't work the way it's supposed to. So um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I have to say, like, you know, I've got my big giant apple and it's just beautiful it's always got yeah, beautiful images well, cameras are great everything about it's great little plug over there for apple just apple like, like we're we're here we love you everything yes, we have exactly. is apple yes Pretty much. no but getting like i could use the camera from my laptop but mm -hmm. i drag the screen there and hey, then Jamie. all you'd see is this <laughs> sideways <laughs> so, so yeah. i have to find a way to move the two i might just not bother with a webcam and just figure out how to move the laptop okay. higher over the screen because i am loving i'm loving, I'm loving the screen experimenting experimenting is always screen always is fun. is huge so i'm loving yes. it yeah you know but no it's probably yeah. you don't have to go and read what's what <laughs> i know but you Everything know here's after like, yeah. after having to great. bop back and forth from chat rooms yesterday. I'm in such a great appreciation for our <laughs> chat room on the Over motherboard. Here. Here. Everything is all here, which yeah, is Yeah, we'll really call nice. it the motherboard, right? Yeah. The motherboard. Like yeah. I am so grateful yeah. that they're all there because when we do board. a pre-record, yeah. uh, it's like going back and forth and then you have to push play and move it back because there's a lag. And sometimes I'll give a comment, but if you're listening on Facebook, you haven't heard it yet, but YouTube already has. It's, so it's true. It, it is really difficult. Um, you know, we have yeah. so many guests on the other side of the pond and we love to accommodate everyone. So, yeah, you know, it's the way it is, unfortunately. Hi, Jamie. Boo, but, um, yeah, and they're we're, we're, fantastic guests. We're just getting ready. He was. He really was. Yeah. Um, he sent me a few goodies today, too. Which is awesome. Yeah. Um, but we should get to the bio because I have okay. just sent this off to Meredith. Yes. Uh, our guest tonight is an author of Becoming Ridiculously Awesome. Who doesn't want that? Meredith Herrenbrook <laughs> is an experienced NLP coach, 
a certified master practitioner from NLP Marin, initiated into Huna by Kahuna Mark Sato in Hawaii, where she studied under studied Huna under him for three years. So mm. cute. We are looking forward to speaking with Meredith Herrenbeck today. Anytime now, just waiting. So yeah, I'm I'm really curious to see what this is all about. Um, what is her information was Huna? initially sent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she had me on. You know, on the whole um, soul const family soul constellation to me sounds like really fascinating. So I'm yeah, like, you know what? I want to learn more about this, and it's really positive stuff. And I think right now, you know, world's a little crazy. We can definitely <laughs> stand for some of that. There we go. It's an and, understatement. Oh, it, she is. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Great. How are you guys? Oh, Good. we're doing well. It's Thursday. It's almost Friday. It's exceptional. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, we like that. It's Friday we Eve. Do, we do, but we love doing our shows because then we get to hang out with fine people such as yourself. So <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. So welcome, um, you know, here to the Outer Realm. This is uh, your your first round with us. It's going to be very nice. laid back, lots of fun, and just feel free to take it whatever direction that you want. We'll keep up. And okay. you have a lot of people listening, so it's very important to us that you get whatever you need out there, out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. So, And they can ask questions as well, right? Because I love can, questions. They can, right here in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Can you see them on the side? We read them out, but I'm just curious. Well, if you, we'll you, don't have to, like, you don't have to squint as, in or scooch in to see it. Don't like worry. Kind of like this. Hello. Yeah. Okay. We'll put them up for you, so that way you can see them. And... Um, take your time with them. Hello. There we go. Right there. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Carrie. Hello. 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 <laughs> yeah. So where we'd like to um, basically start our humble beginnings and what brought you to this point of your journey? Well, um, so it started with really more of, I guess, the more interesting aspect of, of my beginnings is premonitions. And I had premonitions ever since I was little. And, you know, they'd be for small little things, but it seems like kind of time repeated itself. And as I grew up, um, I had questions <laughs> on right. how it was possible. Mm -hmm. what was going on like it's just like all the questions on well then how does time exist then how do am I perceiving it am I connected to everything mm -hmm. if I am how am I connected so the premonitions really brought me into really questioning how everything worked mm -hmm. um and and so that really brought me into I guess really more my favorite aspect of what I do, which is more the energetic work, the family constellation work, um, because it's so transformative and so profoundly healing in a very quick way. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's not something that you can take a pill for. And right. so it's just really beautiful work. And it's um, mind blowing every single time I, I work with a client. Right. So, so that's where I started was having premonitions. Um, and then I also had trauma when I was little, which might have led to me having premonitions of just being extra sensory, mm -hmm. trying to kind of get ahead of things. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so the trauma brought me into how do I heal myself and so forth. So that was a very long journey uh, into finally in my late 20s kind of going, this, this is not working. Therapy is not working. I'm spinning mm -hmm. my wheels. I'm mm -hmm. telling my story, but God, I'm tired of my story. <laughs> and Jeez. Like, I want a new story, dang it. Right? <laughs> I'm tired yeah. of the tissue boxes and the I understand things that. just not yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, a friend of mine and I were talking and he was asking me these questions. We were just talking about, I don't know, guy stuff. And I was having these boy troubles and he was asking me these questions that literally after 15 minutes, I said, what are you doing? And he's uh -huh. like, what? You know, and trying to be all, he likes to be really subtle about it. He's one of my best friends. And, uh, and I said, I have gotten further in 15 minutes than I've gotten a year in therapy. So 
let's cut the crap. What are we doing? <laughs> and it right. was, you know, and, and so then literally I signed up for NLP, I think two days later. So that was really where I'm like, okay, I'm going to head into this world because it's honest, beautiful, um, energetic work as well. And um, it just, I just said, give it to me all, you know, I, I want it all. And I want to know absolutely everything I can, because it was just, I needed it for myself. And then mm -hmm. as I was processing, I'm going, how does not everybody know about this and use this on a daily basis? Oh, so, really? That's, that yes. sounds exciting. So why, yes. why don't you tell us, um, like, what exactly is NLP? And then we'll get to everything else. Because I know we're all sitting here going, what is this? <laughs> it sounds magical, but what is I know, it exactly? I in the street <laughs> yeah. She's amazing. I've been watching her all day on YouTube. Oh. What is it? <laughs> yeah. What is it? Okay. So I'm going to explain it to you. So NLP is called, is short for Neuro Linguistic Programming. Wow. It was developed in the 60s by two gentlemen who were in um, Santa Cruz. And you see Santa Cruz, and I think one was a psychiatrist and one was student of psychology. They grouped together and they just brainstormed on what are we trying to do? Where are we, where are we trying to take the client? How do we actually heal people? Mm -hmm. And what they devised was um, a series of questions that brings you to the root cause of the structure that you've created in your world to keep you safe, loved, and alive. Ooh. Meaning, so how it starts is we say, well, what would you like? Hmm. And it seems very, you know, well, hey, okay, I'd like to have a car and I'd like to have this. And we go, great, but what is there something that you would like that you can control within yourself? Hmm. All the work is internal. We can't fix the president. We can't fix Europe. We can't fix Antarctica. We, you know, we can't fix anything outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can't fix our parents, even though we still kind of secretly want to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I still I, my parents want are to or not so secretly. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but it has to be internal work. Right. And so what it does is it works on how do you create you know, let's create an idea on what we'd like to experience tomorrow or in a year or next week. And then we go, great. All right. And we flush it out. And then we go, well, huh. And we ask questions on how are you not having it now? Or how are you not able to even start creating the, the path towards the experience? Like what, why aren't you, you know, getting on, on the platform to get on the train? Mm -hmm. what's happening and and so the questions help the client and the facilitator to understand the origins of how we are sabotaging ourselves um and keep and, and it's all basically we go back to our childhood and figure out what were the best possible solutions you created for yourself mm -hmm. in whatever trauma or small situation even if it's Hey, your parents, maybe you had a messy room and your parents are like, they are on you to be clean and they give you judgments and all these things. And you may have to make a choice of, okay, I don't want to be in trouble. I want them to like me and love me. And so I'm going to make not just a choice to clean up my room, but I'm going to make beliefs out of this whole situation. Mm. And so the whole ball of wax that we create in our minds and in our in our behaviors gets filed away if it works well enough. And we bring it out every single time it works again. And we keep using it ad nauseum until um, we get a system update or we go, wow, my life isn't working anymore. Mm -hmm. I've got I've got to make change. Mm -hmm. But the thing is we often focus on changing behaviors. Right. But that's not where the change lives. Oh, really? The change lives in our paradigms, in our belief systems, and and it's really enmeshed and entwined in lots of different places. Because what if you say, well, maybe your parents were really, um, 
really, really organized. And you just, I don't know, it didn't really matter, but you had to somehow to get along, mm. be really organized. And so if you go to a friend's house as an adult and they're unorganized, your brain is going to get triggered of like, this is not safe. I don't oh, know wow. if I can hang out with this person, mm. right? It goes, because it goes back to, my parents are going to be angry. I'm not going to be safe. I'm not going to be loved. And, and it's the belief systems that create the structure on which we behave. Mm. So don't look at the behavior look at all the feelings and the thoughts and the judgments and all the things that we're hearing that we're carrying with us mm -hmm. in the present moment from the past. Wow. That's, so that's a hard pill. That's, yeah. To, it's very it difficult is. for some people to separate that. And I mean, you know, when you think even as parents and having a child that you need to work with, I had a cousin who was a child psychologist and he recommended this, like my daughter's high strung. It's like, I'm the freaking boss in this house. And you're just like five. It's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> and he recommended this, this, this book and this other um, psychiatrist or psychologist within our area in Southern Ontario to go to. And I found it's not that the method didn't work, but it was to me, you're almost, you know, they're, they're saying you have to isolate your child. You have to not cave into the crying and not cave into what they want. And I'm in the, I'm in the other room bawling. Going, I can't do this. I mean, where, where was somebody like you? <laughs> when we we're going through this because I think right. about it even today and it, it's horrific. For both yes. yourself, the parent, and the child. It's traumatic for everybody. I oh mean, anytime my, my children cry, I have two kids. One is, um, they're both girls, four and seven. And when they were younger, any crying at all, literally my heart would hurt. And my yes. husband's like, hey, what's the problem? It's okay. you know. But it was physically painful for me when they were in pain. So yes. to become objective, and put on my, you know, NLP hat and go, hey, you're in trauma. Let's talk about it. It's like, so, so that in itself was a very big learning experience. Like I, I can manage um, more adult conversation, you know, but when someone is in absolute trauma, you can't logic your way out of it. You have to you be can't. present with it and you have to go, you know, and the positive parenting, as a side note, is great stuff these days because it allows space for the child to be in that trauma because they're going to get out of it. They're not going to cry for five hours. Mm -hmm. And then once, you know, and, and their oh, brains oh, oh. will shift. Sorry, I'm trying to release all these things. <laughs> I'm what are we doing here? <laughs> oh, we're, we're, yeah, I know. I keep trying to block them. We're being spammed to death. Popular oh. show. Everybody just tries to nail you a million times at oh. a time. But apparently they're gone off of, but they're not on the stream. So sorry about that. Anybody oh, made, or anybody interested in online strips? Yeah, there we go. All <laughs> kinds of them. So, <laughs> but I, I can't so, hear you. Amelia, I can't hear you. Jesus, I forgot. I, I paused. I paused for the water. Like, what are you trying to say? I know, right? It's like I'm underwater. Sorry, I keep forgetting. It's a new mic. I keep forgetting that you just mute it. And I'm looking like, what do you mean you can't hear me? I'm not on mute. Um, no, there's three on my side. Those bots, they're having a they're having a party right now. Right. Are they cleared on your side? On um, my side, there's three. There's there's here, but they're all removed. Like you put them, block them out, and it just shows that they're gone. So oh my um, no, they're advertised. Huh. Well, they're not on here. You have to almost go into the regular YouTube to see they should be gone in YouTube okay. itself. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're so we're gonna see them there. They're not removing. Okay. Sorry. But we do okay. have a, a a comment that before we get too far ahead. Um, yes, Amelia, please. Do you get that? yeah, thank you. Hi, Wayne. Uh, Wayne says that was totally me. I equated how much I did for my parents to how much they loved me. Mm -hmm. So when I didn't do what became expected of me, they were disappointed with me, which equated to not loving me. Oh, I know. So it's, sorry. Yeah, no, it is. It's very, very sad. Um, I think and you're dealing with professionals who add to the problem. You know, so like I've got like, you know, you have your children who are in their 30s now going, wow, I remember that. And I'm like, <laughs> it's terrible. 
<laughs> but you can't undo it, right? So what you're saying is even as adults, can they come in and have that Absolutely. Removed? You can do it if you're 90 years old. And the wow. thing is, what's so cool about NLP is we, so we flush out our future desired state. We go, okay, what would you like? And what would having that do for you? And we figure out what really they're wanting to experience and feel. And we have them fully step into that experience. And sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, they'll just go, I want it, but, and, that's, right. and, and we go, well, but what's the but? That's why we're here. Right. And what are all the objections? And, and a lot of the times it's, well, I didn't feel safe and loved when I was little. Um, and, mm -hmm. or if I change, would I still be me? Mm -hmm. Would I be worse? Would I be better? Would people still like me? You know, so the fear of changing ourselves can rock the boat in our family systems or societal systems that we have mm -hmm. in place. Because when we shift, it can challenge the way they're acting and the way they're feeling in their paradigms. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, so we have to kind of move slowly, but the good thing is, is that shift only happens if you want it to. And so we uncover the past and the whole structure. And then we go, all right. And we acknowledge and we build beautiful rapport with that experience. And we, we help lose the judgments. Mm -hmm. because the judgments don't help anybody. You know, if we're always in the fear state and feeling badly about ourselves, it's like we often are judging ourselves more harshly. So then our parents, like, so then the, the energy from our parents doesn't feel so bad. And I, and I used to do that like crazy. Mm -hmm. I would be so hard on myself because that was easier to stomach than feeling, mm -hmm. you know, Anything the else? judgment from my parents. Mm -hmm. So, oh yeah, so yeah. when we uncover the past, oh, then we start to offer new um, new belief systems and, and so forth. And we go, well, do you have to believe that? Like you were five. Do we have to believe that anymore? And often people don't even understand or even didn't previously understand or know what they were believing about that situation mm. or what they were hearing like often, you know, um, it's a definitely a neurological thing. If people are looking back and forth as they're talking, that means they're hearing something. Mm -hmm. And so if they're hearing something over on the left side, it's they're hearing something in the past and often it's apparent, you right. know? And so you go, okay, so what are you listening to here? What are you always checking for mm -hmm. when we're talking about this subject? So what are you hearing? What did they say? Mm -hmm. So what we do is we uncover everything. We look at the structure and then we, um, we kind of, we make a new offer. We, and, and then once we make new offers and the, and the brain goes, wait a minute, I can have that now. I can, I can put that down. I don't have to feel this way. Mm -hmm. Then the, then what happens is neurologically, you're, you're kind of shifting the tracks from the old, really ingrained path into the new one and right. so then as the new one starts being reinforced the old one doesn't need to be there anymore and the brain just kind of dissolves it and makes you know uses all of that for other things no so you that's... don't have to manage the mm. the ptsd you don't have to manage or try and shift your behavior or muscle yeah. it mm. it's exhausting so why be exhausted all the time there's enough other things to do. There should be a honestly. course on this for parents. For parents? I'm going to work on that. I've got a long list of things to do, right. but that is definitely yeah. one thing I want to I hope so, because I was just going to ask, I had a parent who constantly made me feel guilty, but then I had one who was so supportive. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. it, it, of course, I favored <laughs> my dad over mm -hmm. my mom because my mom scared me, but... Um, as I got, it took until my twenties to actually, what I call fall in love with her again, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then I lost her. She passed when mm -hmm. I was 27. So I had, I had four good years with her that I'm grateful because some people don't have that at all. And mm -hmm. I had a greater understanding of why she was the way she was because it's a chain that needed to be broken. And I'm proud to mm -hmm. say I broke that with my daughter. Mm -hmm. Definitely did. I had to. There was no, no way yeah. I was going to allow that to happen again. 
there has to be some kind of a guideline. Like, I love this approach. I think the closest thing they have now is um, parenting. It's called respectful parenting. Mm -hmm. it, and yeah. it sounds very, very similar. Because I know I'll watch my daughter-in-law do it with the little one who completely rules the house. And basically, she's like, I know, sweetheart. But this is this is this. And he's just like, ah. and I'm just like, I don't know if that approach is really going to work right now. <laughs> because he is clearly in charge. But it's just, you know, the right. balance, right? Yeah, it is a balance. He'll yes. get it. <laughs> he'll get it <laughs> well, or she will, one of the two <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i i like the respectful parenting kind I of thing too. and i, I and i was a person who didn't use the word no mm -hmm. i used a different mm -hmm. way of of saying no oh, without using the, word the words or anything like that no no oh, yeah no so yeah. wayne has another comment yes off. wayne i found that if i could put myself down harder and better than anyone else could i essentially disarmed mm -hmm. them but i also did extreme damage to myself at the same time it was a lose-lose when you're making me cry i know i think we should right just now. have with Meredith. <laughs> yes <laughs> Really, no, it's yes. because we're friends. Like my yeah. heart it's is true. really breaking for yeah. him because he's a friend. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's it's tough the damage that that gets done uh, without people aren't just aren't aware of it. I understand older yeah. generations. You know, we evolve, times change. Um, how long has this been an actual thing? NLP is this fairly new? Is this like ancient? Is this? It's from the 1960s. Okay, so it's not it's not brand new. It's not, and um, but it is I'm getting from the out 1960s. there more. I like to think I'm brand new. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I delight. Me it. too, actually. Yeah, it's easy now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it it is fairly new, and you know it. They anyone who practices NLP, there are different uh, teachers out there, and some teach. Uh, a little, you know, some teach a little bit more for the sales aspects of it. Mm. Um, some people do it, you know, to heal themselves and, you know, and then they go on uh, to have clients on their own. Uh, where I studied, I think is the most complete in building rapport with yourself mm -hmm. uh, and, and building rapport with your clients because if you can't go there with your clients to whatever depths of darkness and despair, mm -hmm. if you can't go there and you want to make them feel better because you're uncomfortable with where they're taking you, mm -hmm. then you're the one being triggered and you cannot help them as, as completely. When you have someone who says, or who is in this space of divine witnessing and being completely present with you, and just holding space for you as you experience, you know, whatever we're talking about. And, and if the trauma is too much, which often it is, then there are, are ways that we dial it down. You know, we'll say, all right, I want you to imagine a big thick piece of ice that's five miles tall and five miles wide and three inches thick, and it's kind of blurry. And I want mm. you to make the image black and white. And if it's too close for you and you'll see it in their face and they're squinching and, you know, and they're tense and you go, okay, let's dial it back. Or let's push that picture really, really, really far away so you can just get enough of a hint of it. Mm -hmm. So then you can just step into it for a moment and then come back out already feeling better and already knowing you're safe. And so, and then tell me what you were experiencing in the past mm -hmm. and I've already done three things that you probably weren't aware of is that you are already safe mm -hmm. so you're imagining when I'm using the word already mm -hmm. your brain is looking for what I am mm -hmm. right and and saying so you're already safe right we want to feel safe mm -hmm. and 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 so you you embed certain things to help them calm their breathing feel safe in this space because we are talking about memories. These are things that happened in the past, mm -hmm. but we're experiencing them now. And so mm -hmm. NLP um, where I was trained was really focused on how to do these things in a very beautiful, very gentle way 
to allow someone to be able to go there. And if Mm -hmm. I can't go there, then they can't either. And I can only help them so much. But I've been through my own stuff. I've done all the deep, dark work. You can take me absolutely anywhere and I will not be shocked. I will not be scared. I will not be worried because I know I can handle it. Mm -hmm. No. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, like I said, I I think that's fantastic. I think you should do a manual for parents, write a book on just basically with those kind of guidelines, because it doesn't come, being a parent doesn't come with a manual. And some people will say, well, you shouldn't need a manual. Yes, you should. <laughs> yes, you should. You do. And I need that manual too. You yeah, know, what is that you're kind of nonsense? <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, yes, you freaking do. <laughs> so yes, I think that would be a really great way, um, great way to start. So you also talk about um, uh, Huni, Huni healing. And I imagine yeah. all of this, you know, we'll save that the, the soul constellation for last because it's just sounds like it's going to be like very in-depth and amazing also. So Huna healing. So if you can bring us into that now and, and how does it connect with everything else that we've just talked about? So Huna healing is from Hawaii and they are taught by Kahuna over there. And Kahunas are the healers of the island and there are different kinds of Kahuna. Uh, there's maybe a Kahuna of war or more in the past. Um, but there's maybe a kahuna of war who would help build up everybody and help them focus and be stronger and braver and and all these Mm -hmm. things, even beyond that. And then there are the healing kahuna where um, they would work with people for their conditions. For example, if someone broke their leg, they wouldn't say, how did you break your leg? They go, why did you break your leg? Right. Okay. The difference is they know that you have your part to play in creating your experience. Right. As does NLP. Right. You are playing your part in creating your experience. The world is not chaos. Mm-hmm. A victim feels that the world is in chaos, but once you learn to master certain levels and, and you learn synchronicities and you go, wait a minute, that was just, that was just too cool. Like what? You know, I I talked about this yesterday and now I'm seeing this today. What the heck is going on? Right. Because you're aligned with that vibration. Right. Right. There's no chaos. So Huna uh, works with people with that paradigm understanding. And so they go, how did you break your leg? What was going on for you? Did you know? And so we also kind of with NLP and HUNA, we ask kind of non-leading questions. So we don't say, well, did this happen to you? And so forth. It's like, no, what was going on for you? Mm -hmm. And, And so then you uncover the emotions, the paradigms, the belief systems, again, just slightly differently. Um, than NLP. Uh, and then Huna also works with ghosts, entities, clearing energies, curses, hexes, all sorts of things uh, in that realm. And it is absolutely fascinating. I'm constantly surprised at what is uncovered with each client. Mm-hmm. Uh, the world is so fascinating that a lot of people don't even oh. know about it yet. And it's just <laughs> no, fun. So. Silly. I can, I mean, if you want me to tell ghost stories or anything on property clearings, I'd be happy to do that. But that's the basis of Huna is, is, is getting into how do we heal the person? um, And what is, what is in their consciousness? Where is it being held? Is it in their body? It's it's almost like, it's like, it's almost like you are trying to avoid you know like you're setting the stage so having to go through um the whole nlp stage doesn't even have to happen if you catch it early enough when they're having in that experience as a child or an adult you may never have to go in you know they may never suppress it they're just you're teaching them almost how to deal with it before they ever like they wouldn't need you if you were able to address it early enough um, I just want to get to this before we go too far. Good point. It's good. Hi, Wes. Wes Coleman. Hello, Wes. I think the biggest thing people may be reluctant to to do this is that they don't want to relive those memories 
I think the person has to have the right mindset to heal. Yeah. Yeah, true enough. Everything For anything, is about mindset. Any change is mindset. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. You have to be ready. No one can force anyone to to heal. But there there might be a point where you go, you start asking questions on, well, how long do I really want to have this around for? Mm -hmm. Or how much could my life be better? And, sure. you know, in after a session or two, or, mm -hmm. and, and, and we You're always work. baggage, basically, right? You are. We're always working on a reward system. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and a lot of people don't understand, well, I don't want this pain. I don't want this PTSD. Of mm -hmm. course not. Mm -hmm. But remember, we set in those belief systems and those triggers to keep ourselves safe. It's just outdated. Right. Okay. I and I want to, and I want to remind, and I, and I understand not wanting to relieve the experiences and which is why I went into detail of, we are very careful with dialing things down, mm -hmm. um, you know, making it fuzzy, making it smaller, making it like doing all these manipulations mm. um, to the image or to the auditory or whatever is coming up, you mm -hmm. know, and there's even an example of a uh, um, um, tool we use where we're in a theater and we have, uh, you know, the person kind of imagine walking down to the first row of the theater or, and then, okay. And then we have the screen of the experience but we can manipulate the curtains mm. and it can be in black and white and fuzzy. And mm. then if that's too much, then we say, great, then you're going to pop yourself out and you're going to be on the back row. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to pop yourself up into, or another version of you um, in the, in the um, photo booth. Mm -hmm. So then the person's looking at the photo booth, looking at the reel, looking mm -hmm. at the person looking in the, at the back row, right. who's looking at the first person who's looking at the screen that is gray and fuzzy. So there are ways to manipulate it. So we just get enough of a flavor mm -hmm. to just do enough change work mm -hmm. to calm the system down. So they know that they're already safe now. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And then when you just start to shift those train tracks and it could be just small and mm -hmm. you give just a little bit of relief and that person starts to calm their breath a little bit and their, their, you know, their cheeks start to warm up a little bit, then we go, okay, you know? Mm -hmm. So there are ways to definitely just get a hint of it and then pop back out and then, and then do the work in kind of current time, if you will. Right. And then yeah. eventually they could just come forward and, and let right. it all go. So do you, right. do you, or I guess you can, it, it basically goes with any kind of trauma. So you know, for, for two decades, I've worked in the field of the paranormal with attachments and things like that. And um, Amelia and I now work together with it on a, on a bigger scale because it's easier with two. <laughs> yes. um, but I know just for dealing with people who have had traumatic experiences, um, being younger, even into adulthood with things that have stayed with them all this time and it's like there is no coping skill there's that feeling of living like a hostage there's always that feeling of being watched there's like you just can't shake yes. something like that it's like a ptsd of a whole other sort yes so but that would, can be turned off right that's what i was going for yeah within a few sessions and i'm not kidding right a few sessions right so um i if i could interject i can cure a phobia absolutely. in about half an hour Right. I'm sorry. I can cure a phobia in about half an hour. Oh, wow. can we right. start with spiders? Yeah, that was mine. That was my crazy <laughs> phobia. It? And what happened was the story was I was phobic of spiders because my mom was phobic of spiders. And oh. to not make my mom wrong, because uh. we want to always keep our parents right. Because if they're not right all the time, then, and if we're living in a horrible experience, then what, I mean, then our whole world would just. Mm. you know, fall out and die. So we have to kind of make kind of a suspension of belief and we have to make them right. So I made my mom right. She was freaking about this spider and my dad's like, oh my gosh, and he's killing the spider. And I was apoplectic. And so when we were going through the phobia fix in, in class, I mean, I was having a hard time, 
But I'll tell you, in half an hour, it was turned off. And I can, I mean, I don't love spiders. Yeah, I will help you. My my mom didn't have a phobia. My mom would pick them up off the wall and bring them outside. I didn't have that mother who was afraid of spiders, although I've created that in my daughter. But the bizarre thing, tarantulas, I don't mind if I have to pick one up. I'm actually, it's on my bucket list. I look at them as little fur balls. Like they're cute to me. Weird. I'm not there I know. Yet. <laughs> yeah. Because you I know was, where I've it is. That's time. the thing. You don't know where the you other know ones where are. It is. But you know where the but they, is, right? And they don't. They don't jump. You know, like they're that's just true. there, and it's like little furry puppies, and they just like sit in your hand, and they're very gentle. Where <laughs> brown recluse can kill you. That little thing can eat you till you die. I don't know. Yes. Like it's just. <laughs> It's one of those That's, things. It's really strange. It's I think it's perspective, it? right? It is. And phobias are She's sweating. Extra... Melissa is sweating just listening to us talk <laughs> about spiders. Melissa doesn't like spiders, <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm gonna go to Niagara. They have it at Niagara Falls where you can pick up the the tarantula. Uh-huh. And it looks like a little uh-huh. puppy. Okay. They for me they have too many legs to track. I can do yeah. insects that are six, the eight, I just yeah. I don't the know. The eight are just too much. Yeah. Two for me six, six and my sister. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, six four. is plenty. You look at a puppy puppy. So anything <laughs> anything more than that, it's a little much. Yeah. So yeah. okay, here we go. Uh, another question. Wes asks, are there any stats to show as to how successful this approach is out of curiosity? And is it used for law enforcement or military personnel? I'll just give it away now. He's a corrections officer. Right. So, (laughs) yeah. So, yeah. So fantastic. Um, I am not aware of that being used uh, in correctional facilities, though I wish they would be. And I would love, you know, I have a bunch of friends who are in this Uh, line of work as well. And I would love to create a course, you know, for correctional officers, building rapport to, you know, another way to diffuse situations Mm -hmm. before they need to happen to build that rapport. Mm -hmm. Because when you have two people doing this, it's because of ego, I mean, a whole host of things. And there's fear based and, and um, I will not be on control. I will not be put down and and you're in and, and people I think in that who are in prison think about the levels of consciousness that they are that are um, foremost in their experience mm-hmm. and if you have have you guys ever read or heard of power versus force by David Hawkins um, he is a yeah. I think he has a PhD so he what he did was he mapped out levels of consciousness through what's called kinesiology which is muscle testing mm. you guys know about kinesiology mm-hmm. no I okay don't. okay so the kinesiology is basically like we are our body is a tuning fork we are connected mm. to everything okay under that paradigm and then our bodies can find the truth of anything Hmm. And that's what dowsing rods can do is, you know, you hold right, your little okay. dowsing rods and, yeah. you know, and so, and you're like a little tuning fork and right. kinesiology is another way to what's called muscle tests. And you can do it with your fingers mm-hmm. and you can test for the truth of something oh. and whatever it is, it could be, you know, um, I don't know. There are 5 million penguins on Antarctica, right. you know, yes, no, yes, no. And right. so forth. And you can attune to that. What he has done is mapped out the levels of consciousness from zero to a thousand where it's on a logarithmic scale of 10. So zero is absolute apathy and a thousand is um, enlightenment, Christ, Buddha levels of consciousness where that is the maximum level of consciousness that the body can sustain Hmm. because the energy is so high then the body just can't really handle it. So given that zero to 200 is apathy at the very bottom. And then you get into anger, self-righteous anger, a lot of ego, anger. I'm going to be better than you. You're not going to be better than me and so forth and so on. And so when a lot of um, people who want to go into the line of work to help these people are above 
but they're still kind of fighting back and forth. And mm. so a way to combat this, if you will, is to not play the game, to be so high up that it doesn't trigger the anger, ego issues that they're dealing with right. and to try and build rapport. And so right. NLP, I think, would be fantastic for um, corrections officers and, well, anybody. I think I wish this would be a high school class because everyone mm -hmm. could do it. Yeah. Write a book, oh, write a course, yeah, write guidelines. Well, I do yeah. have one book. Yes, there we go. This is hey, my book. And oh, I love the tech. Just, just a little back, back. just back. There you go. There you go. There you go. Becoming, Becoming ridiculously awesome. awesome. I love it. I love it. Yes. I love it. So tell, tell us about the book. So I wrote this a few years ago, um, and it started because our nephew was staying with us for a year. Mm -hmm. And he was having troubles of his own. And he's like, I gotta, yeah, I gotta get out of my family's house and can you help me? And Aww. so we did, mm -hmm. and we taught him a lot of things and he was in his early twenties, but there were a lot of things he didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so one of the things was he wanted to get into college. He was doing um, great work at community college and he was doing engineering. And I said, well, if you want to go get a scholarship or funds, then you need to know what you're spending and what you need. So I said, we need to do a budget. And I gave him the format and everything. He never did. And I said, fine, you need to come over here. We'll sit in front of my computer and we're going to fill it out. So three hours later, he's kind of freaking out. But it was great. I was actually happy for it because he finally understood how much he was spending and what he needed so he could you know you have to know what you need mm -hmm. before you ask for help right so then my husband says you know you might want to just send her a little thank you note that would be great and so he sent a thank you note and it was one line in cursive <laughs> and he's like thank you so much for da da da, -da and his name uh -huh. and <laughs> we're like that's so sweet but i think maybe we could help him as well learning how to write thank you notes Right. So we helped him. I became little Miss Emily Post. And I said, okay, here's what you do. Here's why it's important, et cetera. But you're going to do three a day for two weeks and you cannot repeat people. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so he did it. And then at the end of two weeks, we're having a glass of wine on the back porch. And we said, so how was it? And he, his face got really soft. And he says, you know, and he said, you know, the first few easy, thanking my parents, thanking some school teachers, thanking some neighbors, but then it got harder. And then he had to really dig deep. Mm -hmm. And he had a lot of things to overcome. And mm -hmm. so then he said the one most important thing which started my book was he goes, I didn't realize how many people loved me. Aww. And I Aww. started crying, just wow. tearing up. And I'm like, that was not the lesson I was anticipating. And that is so much more. And that is exactly what this kid needed, right. you know, and it was, it blew my mind. And so I wrote it, I wrote a chapter on it and then it ended up morphing into going into NLP and family mm -hmm. constellations and HUNA. And it's a journey of mine, mm -hmm. but helping people work on their journeys at the very beginning steps with mm -hmm. exercises at the end of each chapter. And at the beginning of each chapter, there's a different rune for you to be able to focus on if you ever meditate mm -hmm. for that to help you on your path as well. So where you so, think you start is not necessarily where you end. Exactly. Very, <laughs> like, very true. Like, and it could surprise. be even better. Yes. Yes. It yeah. sounds like it. Wow. That's wonderful. So now, of course, I'm really curious about the family soul constellation. So take us through that because it just sounds totally amazing. Yeah, it's I, I tell my friends it's better than TV. Oh, all right. It, Settling it's in. better than TV, you know, <laughs> and I and I love a good Netflix. But um, the thing with Family Soul Constellations is that it helps you. Oh, we have an interloper. Uh, 
Hello. Thank you. Excuse me. Interloper. <laughs> We're oh, all parents. I yes. Lost my time, miniature time traveler. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's adorable. I know. So sorry. Go, go, go. Oh, oh, don't apologize. apologize. We have dogs that come in. Don't oh, worry about it. Oh, children that join in and it's all fine. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> like a little mini time traveler. I love it. Oh, that was our youngest so the thing with family soul constellations is that unresolved energies stuck emotions um it, in the past upstream when they're unresolved younger generations will grab onto it oh, like, and like genetic imprinting ancestry yes. yeah yes right. Got it. um hold on one sec um this is normal for and this is true. Like don't worry about it I know. <laughs> I know. so i'm gonna open my window it's getting a little warm in here um goodness thank you you guys oh you're welcome oh no problem all right <laughs> so all right, so when there is pain upstream that's unresolved, for example, if there's a big loss of fortune, mm -hmm. if there is emigration, that's an unhappy emigration, right? Forced emigration. Right. Um, if you have childbirth issues or traumas, which are often, un, you know, like you do not talk about, I mean, even until the 60s, like mm -hmm. if you were pregnant, you don't talk about being pregnant. You don't talk about the women problems. You don't talk mm -hmm. about the pains and the stresses and the worries and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if there was someone who died too young, if there was someone who um, went to war, all those sorts of big things, or if, you know, there's a big rift in the family mm -hmm. uh, and no one is talking to each other and it's just a fight that we don't talk about, mm -hmm. then um, that the younger generations will grab onto that in effort to say, I love you in effort to fix it, but they make it, they only just make their own world a mess in right. the ways they do. Right. And what constellations does is it offers a resolution to the stuck energy such that it can dissolve and such that everyone can stand in their own power mm -hmm. and not be a victim and be fully present mm -hmm. and 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 then that love and energy can flow through but if everyone up you know upstream is in absolute pain then how can you have you know love and support in all the ways that we can have it how how can that go downstream mm -hmm. right yeah. and so we, so the younger generations will feel further isolated and um, and, and create pain to try and fix it, but we just make it worse. Right. So what we do is family constellations is we will talk with a client and figure out where the stuck energy is and we'll kind of map it out kind of on a ge um, genealogical sort of thing. Right. And we map the parents and the siblings and who did what. And based on our experiences and patterns that we've learned and discovered, we go, all right, so we, so then we put on the cards, the roles of, of people who seemed the most pertinent to the stuck situation. We fold it up, we mix it all up, it's a double blind, and we either have representatives, people, friends, um, neighbors come in and they will grab one. They don't know the history. They don't know it. They haven't been part of the conversation. All they know is they have a folded card and they stick it in their back pocket. The client will move them around to the room where it feels right. It's all intuition. Mm -hmm. And then the representatives will kind of turn off their higher functioning brains and just start to download feelings, pictures, information, or maybe a phrase that they really want to say. Mm. And as everything gets uncovered, we find the stuck, in, you know, we find the stuck uh, energy. And then we go, all right, well, what do we do now to fix it, to heal it? Mm. And this is operating outside of space and time. 
you know, it's almost like a soul fragment, you know, where it's stuck out of space and time, mm-hmm. but it's still, you know, relevant. It's still kind of going. Mm-hmm. And so when we offer a resolution, you know, maybe these two people are not talking to each other. We go, why don't you say I'm sorry? I don't want to say I'm sorry. But what if you did? <laughs> oh, and they'll, you know, and they'll hem and haw and be all mad. And then they go, I'm sorry. I did that. It was my fault. I I acknowledge my part in that. Mm-hmm. Imagine if everyone just did that in real life and we go, I'm sorry, I was being a jerk. Mm-hmm. So we do that in this in this space. And then the room will shift, the energy will shift. And then all the pain, it just it, it, it just kind of filters through and people move around and then and then people start to feel better. Mm-hmm. And, and so forth. And once we finally get to a really good ending point where everyone's kind of in the rightful place and everyone's standing tall and, and, and the client or the representative for the client is feeling really good and at peace and, and really solid, then we close it. Here's the kicker. When we offer a resolution in this or outside of space and time in this room, it makes a ripple effect in real time Mm. such that people who are still alive might act differently. They might feel differently. They might talk differently towards you. Mm -hmm. They might be softer and gentler or acknowledge, well, I, you know, we've never talked. Let's, let's talk or chronic pains might go away or addictions might go away. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It's very, very interesting work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is because if you do carry that angst or the stress, it can cause physical ailments. And of course, obviously, you know, addictions, if you're if you're hurting inside, you're gonna often lean to yeah. to one form or another, right? Depression, anxiety, addictions, Absolutely. like like a lot can come out of that. So you not only have these emotional um, disorders, you can actually have physical disorders. You do. And I would bet it's a total guesstimate, but I would bet at least a third of our negative experiences are based on family constellation issues. Wow. Wow. I recently had a constellation um, for a woman who is in her early 20s, always had issues with her older sister. There was always just the older sister trying to just I don't know, just be forceful with her and just not have a nice, gentle, sisterly friendship. Mm. There was always issues. And once I did the constellation, less than a week later, she texts me and she says, it has to be this constellation because we hung out on Saturday night. It was the first time we were just sisters laughing, having fun. There was nothing but fun. She goes, it was the best night of my life with my sister. Wow. It so, was awesome. Do yeah. you think, because when you're, you're dealing with, you know, a constellation, you think to yourself, I, when I think of it, I think, you know, ancestry, I think maybe even past lives. If you have angst, let's use the sisters, for example, you know, there's no real rhyme or reason why the older sister would just act out like that with her younger sister. Um, you know, it could be something that stems way back. It definitely could. And definitely. You, that's <laughs> that's right? why I have these three yeah. tools. Because like, yeah, is it yeah. neurological? Is it right. childhood based? Mm. Is it family based? Or is it past life based? Right. Is it entity ghost based? We don't know. But I'll tell you, I use all these three tools with my mm-hmm. clients. And I love, I really prefer, and this is what I do, is I have four sessions with each client. Because one session is just not enough. You're just scratching the surface. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I like to be complete with a healing such that, you know, I, honestly, I don't want to take your money and just have you on, on the payroll for five years. Mm-hmm. I want you to feel better. I want you to have the life that you want. I want you to go and experience life as you see fit and not have mm-hmm. to manage the pain and try and take more pills or, you know, or whatever, like, and I've been through it. I've had plenty of years of my own pain and trauma. Um, I don't want that for anybody, but Mm -hmm. four sessions really makes a huge shift for people. 
Mm-hmm. And I and I use all of them. And and before the first session or kind of the first session, I always clear someone. I always do a full clearing because if you do not, that which is attached to you, they don't want the change. They were there because you're at that vibration. Mm-hmm. And so they will reject any change. Right. And such you'll have wasted your time and money. And then you're like, well, what happened? It's because the entity has kicked out that learning and you you can't shift. So I clear them out gently, but firmly, mm-hmm. depending on what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And, um, but most often it's, it's, you know, family members who've died, you know, maybe grandparents, uh, mm-hmm. and they just love you and they want to be around and make sure you're okay. Mm-hmm. But I go, well, this is not the best place for you. You need to move on. And so they mm-hmm. can be them and you can always visit whenever you want, but right. let them live their life to the fullest. And they go, you- Oh, Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. They go, <laughs> that, oh, be hard. really? I'd be that yeah. kind of grandma. What updates. do you mean? Leave? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm going to make you terrible. leave. I know. You I would be leave. Michelle. Yeah. No, you're going to leave. Yeah. This is my little prince. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> my meanwhile, by then the child would be like, you know, old. Right. But, um, so what, what, how do you handle it? Say, um, I mean, more either uh, malevolent, maybe interdimensional entity um yeah have you worked with extraterrestrial attachments like people abductees have not yet Ooh, okay, i have not so no i'm not um the more i learn about this world i'm like i think that really does happen yeah. um there's just so much information out there where i'm going well okay well if i believe in all this other stuff i mean why why can't this be possible i mean the you, the universe is so huge it's like Mm. You know, for us to be the only planet is kind of silly to have life. Well, so but I have not worked right with here that on this before. planet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I have not you know. worked with those, yeah. but I have worked with some pretty malevolent ones. Right. Um, where I've had to get really stern and really serious and really big. Right. Uh, and the thing is, I know the game. Right. And I know the rule is one soul, one body. Right. And I'm working on behalf of my client right. and you cannot dissuade me. And I have a lot of helpers helping me and they mm-hmm. will come in mm-hmm. and do what they need to do. So this is not a discussion, but right. the other thing I do, and you know, if they kind of get haughty, if you will, um, I, I will start off there. And if they don't back down, then I go, why do you feel you need to do this? And then I pull out my NLP and I go, why do you feel you need to do this? What's going on in your world that you have to have these bosses that and a lot of times they're just given instructions. Right. And I go, well, I want to talk to your boss. And then I want to talk to your boss. I want to talk to the boss and let's have a conversation. Mm-hmm. So because talking with the, the underlings who are as, afraid, I go, all right, well, great. Well, can I work on behalf of this young, this entity? Mm-hmm. Um, and let's break that contract. Because anything mm-hmm. can be rewritten. Right. And let's work on that because my client, that's my number one priority. Mm-hmm. But two, if I can help them out and I'll update their systems and often, mm-hmm. so often they'll go, wait, I don't have to be scared and, and working for these guys. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. You can go over here and I have people, you know, or, or beings to help you. Yes. And they go, oh my gosh. And and, and so I'm, I'm freeing more than one being at a time. Mm-hmm. And and I think a lot of it is empowering the person, your client in this case. I, I don't think people realize how, how powerful they are and how much control they really do have over themselves and their environment and these other beings. It's like you're tapping in and reminding them of that. Yes. Or yes, reminding them from long ago and far away. But yes, mm-hmm. we are powerful. And mm-hmm. but as you know, we're we're taught as a child not to be powerful because as parents, we didn't get the rule book. And I know, right. you know, my child's probably going to go in therapy. Let's be honest. I'm, no one's perfect, right? right. There's, right. there's regardless, the translation, the perfect translation from the perfect parent to the perfect child, it's near impossible. Mm-hmm. So, but you do the best you can. And, mm-hmm. you know, I teach my girls energy work and my little daughter's going like this and she's making energy oh, balls and all that. So and cute. someone gets hurt. <laughs> She puts her hands on and eventually she might become a Reiki master. Who knows? Right. But um, mm-hmm. 
yeah, but it's it begins with those little small things and to empower, like with the positive parenting, to empower kids that they are not victims of their feelings, that mm. they are not their feelings, but they have feelings. Mm. You know, and and that they the the feelings can be objective. They can be malleable, mm -hmm. right? They can be changed, and that's just neurological work. And it's you know, okay to start be off mad, little. You know. Yeah, it's definitely. Okay it's okay to, okay to be, be mad. mad. Yeah, I think I parents forget that they're little people. They can be mad if they want. They can be sad. They can be yeah. saucy. <laughs> it's always good to not be too saucy, but you can still be saucy. I know mm -hmm. mine was like As that. As a parent, you shouldn't be teasing them and laughing either to encourage certain bad behaviors that we're guilty of doing. Yes, it's so true. <laughs> it works both ways, not just leave them with the bad because behavior. Because they're really but cute when they're doing not it. Though. That does not help. I know, right? but it's just. <laughs> it's true. It's not so cute when you're in a restaurant. <laughs> No. That's all I'm saying. Well, that's true. Or there is a, a time and place for things. Or on a plane. My child never cried on a plane. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so it's all about preparing them. It wasn't about yeah. fear. It's all about preparing them for this big adventure and, you know, mm -hmm. getting them set up with their little ear planes. Those are those little things that you screw into your ear and it releases enough pressure so you don't have them screaming and, you know, Freaking out because yeah, you don't sure want to see your child in pain. We're very grateful to you for that. <laughs> Absolutely, I was grateful too because my ears pop. But those things work <laughs> wonders. If you guys want to sponsor us, you know how to find us. But <laughs> uh, airplanes for those of you traveling right now with little ones, you can very get cool. them. At, well, you can get them at drugstores. They look like little corkscrews, and they have a yeah. hole on the other side, and it releases enough pressure so that your ears there isn't any pain. Mm. That's great. Just saying. That's great. There we <laughs> go. You get that one, Amelia. Yes. Uh, Melissa said they need to work through the emotions to be able to deal with them. If they can't as a child, how do we expect them to deal with them as an adult? Mm. Yes. Yes. Like husbands. Um <laughs> Like <laughs> the man child, I mean? want to roll. I want to roll. Yeah, not necessarily my Did husband, but other people's husbands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get your yeah. husbands in check, lady. Um, <laughs> yeah, with that, then you have to go see somebody like Meredith, Melissa. There you go. <laughs> so, right. There you go. Solves the problem. So, yeah, uh, it, it is. You have to, I believe that you create confidence when you teach them that it's mm -hmm. okay to feel that and it's okay to yeah. live through it and you're going to survive this and then ask them, mm -hmm. you know, how they feel and, and what did they learn from it is very important. I think it's important to speak to your children um, with the greatest amount of respect as well and not just dis not dismiss their, their, their opinions. I mm -hmm. think the biggest thing, the worst thing a parent can do when a child is reaching out to you because they're still learning manners and they're just pulling on your, your pants is turn around and say, don't tug on me. Instead, mm -hmm. turn around, bend down on your knee and say, what can I do for you? What mm -hmm. do you need? Acknowledge mm -hmm. yourself that they don't have that ability. They're reaching out however they can, because what will happen is they'll stop asking for help and start sure. internalizing. So, well, mm -hmm. I know cause my mother was dismissive with me. So that's how I know I mm -hmm. lived it. Right. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So do, do you find like just that, do you, do you have a lot of people like that come to you and is it parental issues are dealing with the most or what's the thing that people struggle with the absolute most? Because I think it's a cycle, like Amelia's talking about. If you get it, you know, from your parents, it gets passed down. It's just something that if you're not taught to break away from it in the first place, it would just keep on going. And, you, you know, you just never would be able to retire. So. Yeah, to learn behavior. <laughs> yes. Um, I think I don't have anything predominantly sticking out, but it does mm -hmm. often go to childhood um, right. where... It, the thing is, it doesn't have to be a big event. Mm -hmm. It could be a very small event that was just profound. Like right. um, we had learned in class about this one woman who 
um, who thought that the bridge that she had to cross every day to go to work was so curved that the cars would fall off the side and into the ocean. Oh. And, and, you know, and, and the, the teacher talked about, well, he goes, well, do other bridges have the same curvature? No, no. He goes, oh, it's amazing. It's this one that you have to travel every day. And as he unpacks the history, he learns that the father was like a bridge engineer and he would judge, be very judgmental in his little, you know, offhanded comments about bridges and other people's works and so forth and so on. Uh, so to make her father right, right, she imagined that it was totally dangerous to cross the bridge every day. And wow. it was just a very innocuous statement. So it's so little kids will never make their parents wrong. We will make ourselves wrong and we will do anything we can to manipulate anything within our control to make it okay to survive our childhood. Um, even if it's the best childhood in the world, we still make those choices and decisions, um, you know, and about our childhood and our family. And mm -hmm. so when we unpack it, yeah so there's there's no one place where you know everyone's like i was abused this way or this is this it's all different mm -hmm. and and um it's all unique and it's spread across the board this is also yeah. a place where racism is bred and grown yes now there's one thing i want to say about that if i may because i've been thinking a lot about that of yeah. course Society moves slowly mm -hmm. because if we think too outside of the box in which we were raised, we don't want to get ostracized from those who raised us. It's very difficult. Like imagine just saying, okay, if I say, let's just say we're in the 1800s. Okay. It was more prevalent then in those ways that if you say blanket, nope, can't do this, can't have slavery, can't do this. And everyone goes, but this is our livelihood. This is what we were raised with, et cetera, et cetera. Then thinking that way will be very difficult. And they will go, great, move somewhere else. And you lose all your friends, all your family, mm -hmm. everything. Nowadays, it's easier because, great, I'll get on a plane and I'll move to another city. I can start my life fairly easily. Right. But I think societies move slowly because of the worry or the actual threat of what you would lose. And mm -hmm. one of the questions in NLP is what would you lose of value if you did have what you wanted? Mm -hmm. and, and that unpacks a lot of what our fears are. Hmm. Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I don't know. It, it comes back to the term <laughs> sins of the father. You know, it's just the sins sure. of the father, right? You just, it just gets passed down. And if you don't break that cycle, because yes. I've had, I've known people, you know, even, even in my life who just have had their parental issues and they just can't seem to break free of it, even through traditional counseling, obviously. Um, right. That's why I'm work. here. Honestly, that's why I'm here because yeah. this does work. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have statistics to answer the question um, previously. Mm -hmm. No, I don't have statistics, but um, I've never had a complaint from my client. They've always been going, oh my gosh, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And when you can uncover all the stuck energies from childhood, family, and entities or whatever else is there, past life, mm -hmm. soul fragments, Mm -hmm. um, when you can heal yourself rather and I'd like to actually, it's the first time I've asked this, rather than saying breaking the cycle mm -hmm. is just healing the past. And what Huna says is when you heal yourself, you're healing seven generations above and seven generations below. Wow. Nice. You know, yeah, so when rather I say, than, yeah. Sorry. When I say break the cycle, I mean like I didn't spank where my mother hit and was verbally yeah. abusive. That didn't come into play in the raising of my children, my child, my husband yes. doesn't count, right? 
But my, <laughs> child, my child, I've been married 29 years. I can say that, but, <laughs> but um, yeah, like it, it wasn't something that it was, there was no way I was going to communicate with her that way. I'm very, very thin skinned. I'm highly empathic. So anything that said to me, I just, you know, I cringe and I take it deeply personally. So me too. that was a lot of healing. Well, you understand the healing is difficult. And even when you start to gain your confidence and you start to feel like, yeah, I am good at this or I am, I can do that. There's always that in the back saying, mm -hmm. oh no, you I'm so far the other way. It's unreal. Yeah. Like I'm just a hard ass. I am. I am. It really takes a lot. No, but I mean, that works against you also, you know, because you just don't yeah. let it go at all. It's just like, yeah, go try it. I'll mess you up. <laughs> just, you know, you mask it, I suppose. It's probably right. um, the easiest way to say it. So it doesn't necessarily work to your advantage. It just, it would just take a lot more to set me off. Yeah. <laughs> you right. know? No, so, this, I mean, not yeah. angry, but um sad. So thin, thin the skin. sadness yeah. thin skin yeah, yeah not in the no. anger way but in the like i'll yeah. i'll end up in my room like bawling my freaking eyes out and not telling anybody about See, it i'm too it's stubborn it took a that's lot of therapy thick skin. that's all i'm saying yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah being thick skin doesn't like i say it doesn't always work no, it doesn't. Sure, it doesn't. To... My brother's like yeah. that. And I can see when he, when something's hurting him because I know him. Right. But yeah. other people won't see it. They'll see him laughing and smiling. Yeah. But I know that inside he's breaking apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it's 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 fascinating. This I've never heard of of, of Huna or an LP. So um, I was fascinated to see what it was all about. And I think to myself where you've been all my life because you know especially raising children for me that's a big one because yeah. they're the next generation you're setting you are setting in place their foundation as to what types of adults that they're going to be right and and I know we have a lot of parents listening tonight because I know there's quite a few of them in the chat room too so um yeah. you know well the the thing is you can it's never too late, really, I think, to be able to connect with your child. And, and you know, some people say, as parents, you should never apologize. But I don't know if I agree with that. Mm -hmm. If you screw up and you, you go, should. I think you shouldn't go, like, I, this is why I did it. Or I was angry and I was really frustrated and I was just in the heat of the moment. I want to let you know, this is what I wish I would have done. Mm -hmm. And I just wasn't present enough to be able to do that. And I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm going to try better next time, but just know that this is what I was hoping to accomplish and it didn't go quite according to plan, but I love you and I want you to feel safe with me and I'm going to do the best I can to not break that trust or to keep that trust, right? We want to stay things in the positive mm -hmm. and, um, and that's, I think, a, a beautiful way to bridge and keep connection. It's not about not screwing up as a parent. It's about how do you repair those things and how do you keep that line of communication open and keep it real? Mm -hmm. You know, no one's perfect. No one has, you know, the perfect emotions all day and, and everything else. And, and um, I mean, we're going to do the best we can, but sometimes at the end of the day, it's like, all right, I screwed up. I'm sorry. You know, Always and, own and then it. You yeah. That connection. Yeah. Yeah. I love that advice. Agree with owning it. Being accountable, you're teaching your children so much by being accountable and yeah. apologizing. I think it's very important. My mom would buy gifts, not the way to do it. Um, anytime oh. she heard me, it hurt me, it, it then there would be like mm. all kinds of stuff. And um, with my daughter, I, I give myself a minute to catch my breath because she does not make me angry very often. I don't know. I want to be like her when I grow up. She's a Libra. She's just like so easygoing and things go off of her. But sometimes I worry about what she holds inside because she doesn't speak so much aloud. But I, I really believe that it's important to apologize to them and let them know you're teaching them that their feelings are valid. Yes, you really are. And that no one should make them feel that way. So, um, 
Michelle, your mic's not working. Well, Wayne Mallow says owning your mistakes in front of your children is a huge poise thing that you can give your to your children. My son has always been able to come to me and talk to me about anything because of our communication. Yes. Absolutely. There. Can you hear really me now? Very, okay? very, yeah, very, yeah, very okay. important. I'm going to do go. a quick yep. um, station ID. Yep. You are listening to The Outer Realm with Michelle DeRoche and myself, Amelia Pisano. Tonight's beautiful guest here is Meredith Herrenbrook. And we are airing live in the beautiful city of New Orleans on FM Radio 105.3 FM, that is. We're streaming on YouTube, UFO Paranormal, International Public and UFO gods and extraterrestrials radio because joe needs his names to be long and as well we are on all facebook group pages canada's most haunted of course ufo um united public radio and of course our own the outer realm um a massive thank you to folgers coffee for being with us from the beginning we would not have a show if it wasn't for you folgers thank you for being our sponsors we hope to always do good by you and have a long long relationship with you thank you for giving us the support and the sponsorship a huge thanks to award-winning composer dr snick the sonic surgeon aka justin snicker for our fabulous intro and outro you can purchase his music on amazon and bandcamp find justin on social media facebook and instagram <sighs> <laughs> it's like wow, well done. <laughs> it's written down. I know, <laughs> you should have seen me when I tried winging it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it was like it's only been two years, so I should have it I by know. now, right? But sometimes you forget. I know. <laughs> <laughs> then they'll throw in the awards thing. Okay. So yeah, all right, here we go. Mention oh yeah. I didn't mention the awards That's because coming. I don't have it written down. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Um, do you find that I'm um, going through, let's talk about the state of the world. Um, okay. We just come in off of a two year pandemic. Um, that was pretty brutal where we've, we've got everything going on, you know, in Ukraine, for example, do you find that you are busier with either attachments or people are self-reflecting more perhaps? And I think people are self-reflecting more. I think they realize that the pressures that have been so intensified that there's got to be a release valve and hopefully we can do it in a productive way. Right. Um, I think there's a lot of reactivity and mm -hmm. it was like last summer, where I said, you know, I've got to, for myself and not just the business, but I'm like, I have to help more people here. I have to get out there more because of the work that I have done, I'm less reactive because I'm more masterful in keeping my space and checking mm -hmm. everything and checking my house and, and my property. And if I get into that reactive fear base, you know, okay, how do I snap out of it? What's my part in it? And I go down my little list. Mm -hmm. And so, so I am busier. There's more interest, which I'm happy for. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the solace I can offer people, I think is, or the, or the, the quick tool to start now is maybe turn off the TV for a while for a few days, get off kind of that mm -hmm. junkie, you know, being a junkie and, and newsline junkie uh, and, and start being present with yourself mm -hmm. and those around you and writing down what you're appreciative of or doing a five minute walk or a meditation, just being present with yourself and going, well, what do I think? Mm. What do I find valuable? Cause we're worried about what everybody else's importance is, right? Mm. right. but where's ours? Mm. And so we're giving them power. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of I've been hearing from a colleague of mine is that a lot of the interplanetary issues, the entity issues is it's kind of like the matrix. They want your energy. Yes. It's food. It, and, and there's, and, and even so there are a lot of people who have sold their souls to the devil so they could get fame and fortune. They're going to have some issues later on. But there are people who I see 
on TV where I look at their eyes, I go, got it. There's more than one of you in there and you can tell a difference. Mm -hmm. You can see when, when I'm in the same room as these people, I just, I can tell. Well, you can feel it. You can feel it as well. The energy is completely different. I I think people need to realize that these entities, it is food for them. It's, it's a lot harder for them to dwell in a positive environment than it is in the negative environment, negative being anger or, or anxiety or fear, anything that would be deemed something that makes you feel maybe like you are not whole addictions, anxiety, depression, grieving. Do you find Mm -hmm. you run into that with people who are grieving? Because you put a bullseye on your back by wanting so desperately to communicate with that person that you you've lost. Oh, well, I think there are two parts to that. There's one, okay. there's the, the, the act of grieving, I think is very important for the body to do. Right. In, in, in a, in a true sense of it, there are those that can prey on it when you are not watching your back, when you're not aware Mm-hmm. of all that surrounds you. And I remember when I was actually in New Orleans many years ago, I was um, looking at Tulane and we were, and my brother and I, we were walking through one of the cemeteries and it was, there were no people there. It was just my brother and I, but it was very busy. Right. And I could hear it. I can feel it. And they were having a party. And I was like, Oh, this is not like the cemeteries up North, you know, no. the, the history <laughs> is very different, but I swear mm-hmm. it was just one decibel away from me actually hearing the conversation it felt like and um and so there are just a lot of people who are unaware of Mm -hmm. how to keep their space how to check in um with themselves and and be strong and powerful Mm -hmm. and and but the more you do that either through martial arts or self-reflection or whatever it is the more you can be strong in yourself the less you need to give your power away to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't need to. And you just go, but then the the cool flip side of that is the more powerful you are, well, the more attractive you are to people who um, just love having that energy around. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the more you offer the world and Mm -hmm. the less power others can have over others. So it's, it's a gift that keeps on giving. And so I, I wish more people would find their true source, their power, their highest mm-hmm. selves, clear out the history um, and not file it away. So you don't look at it again. Don't reject it. That's the worst thing you can do, mm-hmm. but meet it, greet it, go through that process in a healing modality that works for you. And, but there is an end point, like you will move through it and then mm-hmm. to the other side being cleaner and brighter mm-hmm. and maybe taller, maybe more um, complete in mm-hmm. a way. You'll mm-hmm. feel different. But true grieving, I think, is a very important process. Mm-hmm. But just know that, you know, check yourself once a day. Um, do I still feel like me? Do I have extra energies or or feelings or thoughts that don't really seem like me Mm -hmm. and if you do get a clearing no i agree i I think people so desperately look to get a sign from that loved one they don't realize that there are things that wait and they'll give you they'll mimic that they'll give you what you want and it happens so subtly like you don't even realize the attachment is actually occurring it is very true Mm. Um, a, in, a friend of mine in high school, actually, her brother had died when they were little. And he died, I think, maybe two years old. And she used, I don't know if it was a Ouija board, which I mm. say absolutely not. Mm-hmm. But um, she would connected with what she thought was him. And uh, then it followed her uh, from one house to another and started causing physical problems uh, for her. And uh, until she finally cast it out on her own with her Mm. own volition, which was amazing. And Mm. um, but she talked to the head of school where we were and he was a um, teacher of world religions. And so he's like, 
don't mess. And he told her some stories of what his friends had experienced when they were younger. And it, there are a lot of tricksters. And that's where you have to really start understanding the subtle energies of mm -hmm. feeling, sensing, hearing that just feels a little off. Kind of like sometimes I feel like um, used car salesmen and sometimes they feel like someone in the back alley, mm -hmm. you know, and you just feel, oh, it's not feeling good. Right. And listen to your instincts. Trust it. Takes mm -hmm. a while to trust it. Mm -hmm. And then and then uh, but talking mm -hmm. with loved ones is I would always just do it maybe with through an angel or, you know, just just send them a thought bubble, if you will, just send mm -hmm. them energy mm -hmm. um, and love. They they get it. They get well, that. They're not going to do things to make you feel scared or uncomfortable either it's always going to come with love it, and and that's where i think like they're not going to necessarily come through a ouija board they're going to basically leave you other ways of recognizing who they are whether it's a smell maybe you know like smell of a flower or, or a perfume or they're not going to make you feel uncomfortable yeah. or on edge right and i think with entities right. they're going they drain your energy so you're going to find if you're, if you're not, they won't let you sleep typically. So you're really exhausted. You know, right. there's just little things to look for. But I think people get so wrapped up in grief that they just don't pay attention to these things. They just chalk it up as I'm, I'm grieving. Right. Yes. Yes. And it's, and it's those subtle energies that just, they take a while, but again, it takes a little bit of training mm -hmm. And, and there are very few people who train that out there because there's a lot out there where you should be afraid of ghosts and it's this huge, horrible, mm -hmm. scary thing. No, it doesn't have to be. Yes, there mm -hmm. is some of that out there, but it's not, mm -hmm. that's, to me, from my experience, it's a very small portion mm -hmm. of, of what it does. And even then, um, it's not like if you clear an entity from a home that the home is going to burn down all of a sudden. No, <laughs> it's pretty subtle. It's very mm -hmm. subtle. And, but you mm -hmm. start off with, you know, feeling the energy between your hands, mm -hmm. you know, going into a room and feeling eyes closed. Okay. What does my spouse feel like, mm -hmm. you know, and not touching that person. Like, what does that energy feel like? Mm -hmm. what, do, what does the energy of my child feel like? Could I identify them in a room with eyes closed mm -hmm. and where they're standing? Right. You know, That's and then you start yeah. to go, wow, well, what, you know, notice people uh, in the coffee line. What does that feel like? Mm -hmm. And and then it just takes practice and trusting your intuition. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are very helpful ways to kind of start understanding the power that you have and all the senses that you have. I like that. Yeah. Just being able to recognize familiar energies with your eyes closed and seeing if you if you can. Yeah. is actually really, really good because you should know the energies of your family. Yes. Heck, I even know the energies of my pets. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you know when they're when they're around. You know, you don't have to actually see them. So because yes. um, they just have large little personalities. But I just, you know, I, th I think it's a really good exercise. Yes. So as we're slowly coming up to the top of the hour, I want to make sure we, we cover everything that you want to cover. So where do you want to go from here? So we have an, you know, another probably five, 10 minutes, and then you're going to get to tell everybody about your book and how to find you. So uh, let's see, where do I want to go with this? Um, yes. Well, Amelia, do you have a question or anything that you want to pose? <laughs> I'm interested. I don't are you want, you on the spot. <laughs> no, I was just like, I would love to hear a question that you have. Oh, I was thinking of someone. Anything. I do actually. Thank you. I was thinking um, as you were speaking and I was listening, I have a, um, a family member who I think would really benefit from, from your work and, and working with you with self-esteem and, and going back. And it's not me when I say a family member, I don't mean because <laughs> my family's probably going, yeah, you need it. But um, <laughs> I'm the peacemaker in the family. Um, I really was wondering if you could, what I think a lot of people don't realize when you're in the entertainment industry, um, 
there's a lot of pain that allows you to bring out those emotions that you're required to use as an actor or as musical theater. And how, you know, do you start with someone like that? Like, how can he contact you or, or begin? I know he's not watching cause he's, a, he's in bed early, but. Well, um, my website is livingyourawesome.com. That is, I think, probably the best place to start Get off. Get them to start where, there. Yeah. yeah, we'll, yeah. Put it up on the, we'll put it up on the Facebook page too. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, we've worked different ways through. Um, I don't want to get too personal on air, but um, I, I just felt like your approach, your experience, I feel like is a good match for him. Well, and that's you. what I was thinking of when you said that. Yes. Well, good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, no, thank you. Hold on the, here. The, uh, I think, gosh, I would love to work with Hollywood people because there's, there's a whole lot of extra stuff going on in Hollywood okay, as no, well. Right and the energies make so, me a little, there we go. I would love to do some clearings in, in that whole arena. I think it'd be yeah. useful. He, he lives here in Canada, but he's traveled yeah. the world and um, he's, yeah. you know, and I, I just feel like sometimes you can go the route of coach and therapist and psychotherapist and psychoanalyst. And it just, if it's not a fit, you know, I, right. It, it doesn't matter how good they are at going to the root of things because I've been there as Absolutely. well through therapy and, and through, when I say years of therapy, I mean years of different types of therapy there before coming across a life coach was the best spot place for me, yeah. you know, and my daughter, the same thing, life coach and her, they're just, they've been together for three years and she just loves him, oh, that's awesome. but he wasn't a fit for this family member and with you it was just bells ringing okay. i'm so, just posting this on Facebook, yeah so. yeah so Great. i'd really love to yes, get yes, him yes, to yes, contact you right yes you know. i i would love it i'd be honored and, no, and it's my honor yeah. thank you yes um so how it it works is anyone can go to my website and just at the very least sign up for the newsletter just to get all my updates and you know podcasts that I'm on, um, like with you guys. And, um, you know, I'll often accompany it with a video mm -hmm. and a how to or mm -hmm. something that I'm working on. And so I have the newsletter and then people can sign up for a free consultation um, okay. or buy my book online or go to I'll Amazon for my go book. The book he's, a, he's an avid reader like yeah. I am. Yeah. Okay. So you can do that. And I also have that um, on Kindle as well. And, um, and then, you know, if people want to do a free consult, it's 30 minutes. And, and then we kind of get into how these modalities and how I could possibly help if it's a good fit, you mm -hmm. know, and the sessions are like once a month for about one and a half to two hours. So it's not like a super intense, mm -hmm. you know, we have no. to do everything in one day, but it helps neurologically the shift to happen. It takes like three to four weeks to integrate. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a beautiful, gentle process and, and the, and all of these modalities are extremely gentle. And if there's any tension or any stress, it's like, okay, then we, we shift such that the, the client can be still feel safe and held. Um, because if, if they are not, then one, we can't do the work, but two, I'm not doing my job. My job is to hold space for that person and make sure that they can, that I can help facilitate healing in the best way I can. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. In my opinion, I honestly feel like you're the fit for him. I think this is what he really, really needs, but I'm definitely going to call him tomorrow and tell him. I, I just, I don't do that often <laughs> with our guests. It's just the more I listen to you, I wasn't, I wasn't daydreaming. anything. The more I listened to you and I was hearing you, I could hear how much he could benefit from cool. you. So, yeah. Thank well, you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No, thank you. I, love I, it. I think this is going to work out really <laughs> well for him. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. This is great. Hey, Cece. Hello, Mary. Hi, Cece. 
Yeah. So, okay. Well, your website is already um, up. It's in the stream and it's on the Facebook Very page. Cool. Um, I had to go and put it in there uh, separately because for some reason, streamer just won't do it for Facebook. So it's there now. And um, you have a book again. Where can people find your book? Is it your website? Is it so Amazon? Yes, 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 yes. Amazon <laughs> okay. and uh, livingyourawesome.com. Becoming Ridiculously Awesome. Who doesn't want that? Right. I love that. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And do you have anything coming up? Uh, let's see. I have, I don't have another book written yet. It's, um, it's still percolating, but I, I think it like will that. be much more related to kind of how we find our spouse, um, you know, relationships and, and, and also then getting into the, raising children and not necessarily the positive parenting aspect of it mm. um, because I think there are many books that are geared for that but what happens if maybe your child has nightmares mm. um, and it's from past life stuff or that there's that. actually a ghost in the closet and I've had two different clients She's where funny. they were basically haunted one was a very malevolent one that actually I didn't pick up on until I went in the middle of the night when I was here and I just kind of remote viewed mm -hmm. and it came out in the middle of the night. And I was like, Ooh, that's a different experience. So, right. so the book I want to include, um, how to deal with, you know, how to uh, not deal with children, but how to work with children and their, their needs that might not be an everyday doctor question. Right. if you will mm -hmm. and how can we be present with them with our with our own triggers and how to how to navigate that mm -hmm. uh in more of a a, pre a way to be present and connect with our children in the best ways possible especially you know making them feel safe hey michael making them feel safe in a very obscure sort of mm -hmm. way because yeah, right. there's a lot of parents who will just you know say there's no such thing there's nothing there go to bed or they sort of belittle you know there's no such thing as imaginary friends uh yes there is I'm uh -huh. right that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it yes there foolish. are and don't talk to them exactly. <laughs> don't talk to them. please don't talk exactly. to them <laughs> exactly yeah. but they make the child feel really silly for even saying it and eventually the child withdraws and then the problem yes. gets bigger and well rooted because and you know so i i think it's great i think you know, if you definitely write the book, you just have to come back and uh, I get to do to. this again and talk about it because I think it would be fantastic. It would be. Yes. So um, so this is spurring me on to actually start. Um, but uh, yeah, in the next year, let's see how it goes. But uh, but that's definitely the next book I do want to write is is, you know, how how can we be better in relationships? What are the triggers? Why right. did you find just that right person that just sets all your alarm bells ringing? right? There's a phrase, what you survive, you recreate. Right. And so, you know, so it's how do we navigate all those waters such that we can, you know, not, uh, you know, 10 years later pushed. get divorced. Right. Yes. The button pusher. Or, and get, button pusher. Right. Marry you a know? button pusher. <laughs> or say, wow, this person was great, but now all, you know, 10 years later, they're they're an alcoholic and my dad was an alcoholic and yeah. I had no idea. And how did, you know, and they're blaming the husband. And but it's like, well, maybe how did you create this for yourself again? You know, um, how did you create this? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So no, yeah, um, all those. It's all different perceptions. And people, you never see that in yourself, but you'll see it yeah. in someone else. Very it's, true. Right. I love it. I love I it. I hate button pushers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're going back to that man child thing, aren't we? <laughs> I also no, I don't mind I playing with them because I know how to push back, but I, I don't I don't I it really hurts mm -hmm. me to see a button pusher on someone who is timid. It'll right. drive me crazy to the point where oh. I always have to step in, which I really shouldn't be, but I do. Right. It's yeah. two sides of the same coin, though. So please don't. Yeah, think I know. They're actually, they're they're consciously a victim, but subconsciously they're not. Yeah. They're vibrating at that level that is pulling that person in. Because mm -hmm. once they shift, the button pusher won't need to exist. They'll right. go somewhere else. 
Yeah. And and that's the hard thing is when we feel in that victim state, we go, that person is terrible. They're doing this and oh my gosh, you know, and, and then, but over time through this work, and it might be a few months or a few years, then you'll get to a place of confidence mm -hmm. and you, you'll just vibrate differently. You'll feel differently and you'll think differently. Mm -hmm. And when you do, those people won't come around anymore. Right. No, they're only around because you are available for it. Right. I know, but how do you help Tough someone thing. when you're seeing them constantly being what I call bullied instead of button pusher, you know, mm -hmm. where they just constant digs, constant digs. I'm not one who could sit back. I'm one of those who has to swoop in and save your ass, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to come in there and I'm mm -hmm. going to give that person exactly what they're giving you, but with full confidence right. and without fear of how it's going to make yes. you feel, you know? And so sometimes I try to stay out of it because I think certain people can learn from it and become stronger, but there's mm -hmm. some people that are broken and you can't just sit back and watch that happen in the moment of course if there is yeah. like an actual altercation of course yes and you're doing the right thing step in and and maybe later speak with that person and go so what would you like to be different if anything mm -hmm. what would you like to experience that's maybe a little bit more um enjoyable to you mm -hmm. like neutral words and they'll go, oh, I love this. Well, what stops you? Right. What stops you from having that? And maybe you want to look and ask that person. Maybe you want to start looking there for yourself because you're not going to be able to save that person all the time. No. And only they ultimately can get themselves out of it. They don't know they are powerful yet. But the 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 good news, bad news of that situation is good news is they're being a victim that gives them a reward and it mm. might to some people sound really harsh if i say that and i'm not meaning to some people but don't mind being a victim i know it's they terrible are, they subconscious some part of them one small cell somewhere in their consciousness is getting a reward because if they weren't they wouldn't be there we're smart people we know how to move you know, if we're playing soccer, we know how to move away from the ball. So then how are we not able to get out of the way or spot that person go, yep, I'm out of here or Me? say something such that altercation doesn't happen. So there are no victims. Okay. Ever. Maybe that goes not. back to childhood of, of being that person who was treated that way, bullied by a parent. Yeah. Mm, I know. Yes. Hmm. And you're doing a beautiful job protecting yourself again and protecting that person who needs to be protected. No, they need to be protected. Yeah. In the short term, if this person is an adult, they need to ultimately take care of themselves. And hmm. if they keep not wanting to, then you have to let them do it until they've had enough and are looking for those solutions. It goes back to the old adage. You can't help someone who won't help themselves. It's so you can only do so watch. much. It is hard to watch. To water, but you can't it's it's really hard to hard. watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is for sure. Well, we're at the top of the hour. Unfortunately, they're already it just like sped by. So <laughs> I have to tell you, this was really awesome. Uh, I love Thank it you. when we are students and learning something for the first time. It's just, mm -hmm. oh, look, we just, I have to say, I've spent more time blocking these, these naughty girls <laughs> than I have anything else tonight. And this is never, this is, hasn't happened in months. So I do have to apologize for that, but my gosh but thank you so much for joining us it, it was a real pleasure having you on and i'm <laughs> really hoping that we can do it again sometime i would love it and thank you both it was a pleasure no thank, thank you. you wow thank you very refreshing. much refreshing thank you yes <laughs> thank you and have a good evening all right you too thank you all Bye. thank you bye-bye well, that was awesome. My gosh, already 
done and over. I can't get over the fact that it just sped by so quickly, but we have come yeah. to the end of another amazing segment here on the Outer Realm. Huge thank you to uh, Meredith Herrenbrook. She's just awesome. And I hope some of you guys will take advantage of this. It's just a lot to think about. And boy, it's a whole other perspective. And I know it sure left me thinking a few things uh, myself. So thank you for that, Meredith. A uh, big thank you to Folgers Coffee again for being, um, you know, our sponsor for two plus years, backbone of the show. Thank you. And uh, Justice Snicker for your contribution of your voice and your music. Please remember anyone wanting to make contact with us it has to be the outer realm contact at gmail.com again the outer realm contact at gmail.com takes me a bit of time i do my best but i'll get you a lot sooner than i would if it was on social media next week brings a whole other show wednesday and thursday with two guests who have never been on before wednesday night for the very first time is deborah lynn katz she is the author of you are psychic extraordinary psychic and freeing the genie within sounds almost like Ooh. wow i know so that's going to be a lot of fun without a doubt thursday evening is going to be a little bit out there uh even for us but we're going to do it yes that's we scary. are it is <laughs> for the very first time ever maybe not on youtube i still have to research that penny shepherd will be joining us and she's going to be discussing her life in MK Ultra, Google it if you don't get it. MK You're not going to want to miss it. <laughs> Satanic Hollywood and so much more. So these are going to be really sensitive. Um, so maybe not for everyone, but it's just all of a sudden I'm seeing it everywhere. It's like okay, this definitely has to be a thing. It's all over YouTube right it's, now. Okay, so then we'll feel safe in saying that maybe it can be on YouTube. Um, but also don't forget, uh, Joe Montaldo and I will be doing another segment of the Gray Zone Yay. Uncensored. It's going to be awesome, as always. Um, and then there's going to be a couple <laughs> weeks off, guys. So um, Joe's going to be in L.A., so you're only going to be able to catch it this week. And then it's going to be off for a couple weeks. So I do apologize, but it's the way it has to be. Well, unless you, you live in L.A., then we can tell you where he's staying and you can go bug him. <laughs> there we go. There's always something right there, isn't there? <laughs> Yes, we can, tell you, we can, go, mm. we can tell you where he is. We can tell you where he is. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Well, anyway, guys, behave yourselves. We shall see you next week for another great lineup of guests. Good night. <laughs>